Good morning, friend. I thought you would enjoy being on my, um, we call it the catio, because I have two kitty cats and they like to come out here. Matter of fact, one of them is wanting me to pet her right now named Lexi. You may or may not see her. Um, anyhow, you can see in the background, there's our bird feeder. So you might see some birds, maybe some cardinals, because we see those every day and sometimes morning doves. But it's a really beautiful morning, so I thought I would read out here today. And we're going to read some more of the Bramley Hedge by Jill Barklin. So we read uh, um, Summer. It is now for the time for the Autumn story. So there is, I'm assuming that's Poppy getting ready for Autumn. So here we go. It was a fine Autumn. The blackberries were ripe and the nuts were ready and the mice of Bramley Hedge were very busy. Every morning they went out into the fields to gather seeds, berries, roots, which they took back to the store stump and carefully stood away for the winter ahead. The store stump was warm inside and smelled deliciously of bramble jelly and rising bread and it was nearly full full of food. Mmm, bread and jam, that's one of my favorite things. I like lingonberry jam personally, that's my favorite. Um, Lord Woodmouse, who lived in the old oak palace, was out early with his youngest daughter, Primrose. Now keep close to me and don't get lost, he said as they made their way along the blackberry bushes. Primrose picked the berries nearest the ground while their father hooked the upper branches down with his walking stick. So there they are picking the blackberries. I love blackberries. They're so juicy and yummy. They're an awesome berry. The basket was nearly full when they were joined by Miss Eyebright. I've, Mrs. Eyebright, I've been looking for you, she said. Bad weather's on its way. I can feel it in my bones. We must finish our harvesting before the rain begins. Lord Woodmouse sent Primrose back to the palace and then went on to store stump to find Mr. Apple to make arrangements. Soon, parties of mice with carts and wheelbarrows were hurrying out into the fields to gather the last of the nuts and berries. So that must be Mrs. Eyebright directing Lord Woodmouse. Lady and Lord Woodmouse decided to help pick mushrooms and they were just setting off when Lady Woodmouse cried out in alarm, where's Primrose? Oh no, there they are, and they don't know where their little girl is. She was nowhere to be seen. She wasn't hiding in baskets or under leaves or in the long grass. Has anyone seen Primrose? shouted Lord Woodmouse. She hasn't been here, replied the mouse, gathering berries high in the blackthorn bush. We haven't seen her, called the mice in the tangly hawthorn trees. So there they are looking for her and can't find her. And there they are in the bear, trying to get more berries before the storms come but no primrose. The children thought she was at her grandmother's house and a search party was sent along to investigate. Hot and out of breath, they knocked on the door of Crabackle Cottage. Have you seen Primrose? asked Wilfred. We've lost her. Mrs. Apple shook her head and took off her apron and joined the search. Mr. Apple ran over to the gap in the hedge by the store stump. Primrose, where are you? Primrose, where are you? Echoed across the cornfield. So there they are seeking help to find little primrose. I love the pictures. The illustrations are so pretty. They remind me of Beatrix Potter and like Peter Rabbit. Lord and Lady Woodmouse went back to the palace and they looked in the cupboard and under the beds and the store stump was searched from top to bottom. Oh dear, said Lady Daisy. She's such a little mouse. Where can she be? What shall we do? So there they are looking in the cupboard. She's not there hiding. Goodness, look at all the places she could hide. So many places to hide. That's a really fine hutch to store things. That would store a lot of stuff. Meanwhile, Primrose, wandering along the edge of the cornfield, was quite unaware of her parents' concern. She had spent the morning picking wildflowers and gazing up at the blue sky. And after a lunch of blackberries, she dozed a little in the sun. And she was going to help a group of mice she'd seen gathering seeds in the ditch when she spotted a little round house high up in the stalk of corn. I wonder who lives there, she thought, and decided to climb up and peep through the windows. There she is. And that must be what she's talking about, the little house. Wonder what could be in the little house. As she looked in, she saw two pairs of bright little eyes peering back at you. I, I do beg your pardon, she stammered as she climbed down again. We were just going to have tea, a voice called after her. Won't you join us? Primrose found the tiny front door and went inside and it was very cozy. There was thistle down carpet on the floor and neatly woven grass walls were covered with books and pictures. Sounds like a great place, books. 
The two elderly harvest mice who lived in the house were very glad to have a visitor. They sat Primrose down and gave her a slice of cake and handed her her album of family portraits to look at. It does look like a cozy little cottage. Look at that. And then there they are sitting down to all the treats. Primrose and her two new friends. Then Primrose had shown all their, when they had, Primrose had been shown all their treasure. She thanked the mice politely and climbed down to the ground again. She decided to walk to the edge of Chestnut Woods before she went home. Some Bramley Hedge mice were still there picking blackberries in the last of this evening sun, but they were too busy to notice her. She peered into the grasses looking for feathers and useful things. Hidden in the brambles, she discovered a very interesting hole. I wonder if anyone lives down there, she said to herself, and wandered into the tunnel. There she is, and there's the tunnel. It does look interesting. I mean, I would be intrigued. You never know what could be in there. Could be all kinds of treasures. It was very dark inside, but she could just see round front doors set into the walls of the branching passages. And as she went deeper into the tunnel, it became darker still, and soon Primrose could see nothing at all. I don't think I like this place, Primrose said with a shiver. I'm, I'm going home. And she turned to leave, but with so many passages leading this way and that, she had no idea where she'd come, and she picked up her skirts and ran through the maze of tunnels. Goodness gracious, look at that maze of tunnels. So many places she could go. I mean, they could be good. It could just be dead ends. I don't know. I would be scared too. At last, she saw a glimmer of light and ran towards it. And the passage opened to a thick clump of brambles and briars under some tall trees. And Primrose had no idea where she was. I can't see the oak tree, she said in a small voice. I can't see the willow by the stream. I think I must be lost. It was getting very dark. With big drops of rain began to fall and splash through the leaves around her. And Primrose huddled under a toadstool and tried not to cry. In the distance, a lonely owl hooted, and the branches of the trees above creaked in the rising wind. There were scrambling noises in the brush quite near to Primrose, and those worried her most of all. It got darker. Oops, I should have showed you. Look at how spooky the woods look. That is a little scary, especially if it's not familiar. It got darker and darker, and soon everything disappeared into the night, and Primrose was just trying not to think about weasels, when to her horror she saw five flickering lights coming through the woods towards her, and she could just make out five strange figures behind them. They were shapeless and bulgy and seemed to have no heads at all. Primrose wriggled further back into the brambles, and the figures came closer and closer, and Primrose realized that they were going to pass right by her hiding spot. So there she is hiding under a toadstool. And there's the mysterious things coming to see who, where, right by her. And the nearer they came, the worse they looked, and she shut her eyes as she heard them pass. Only a whisker away from where she was sitting. One, two, three, four. And she decided to be very brave and take a peep as the fifth one went by, and it walked with a limp and it had a tail and whiskers and Mr. Apple's trousers. I do believe those are people looking for her. Those are friends. Grandpa, she squeaked with delight, and each of the figures turned around, and she recognized them. Mr. Apple, Mrs. Apple, Dusty Dogwood, and best of all, her own mother and father. Primrose pushed her way through the brambles. Primrose, cried Lady Daisy, you're safe. And the harvest mice said, you had gone to the woods, but it was so dark and wet, we'd almost given up hope of finding you. And her father said her father, and he picked her up and wrapped her snugly in his cloak. Ah, a nice little reunion in the glow of light to keep them all safe. Primrose was nearly asleep by the time they got back home, and Lady Woodmouse carried her up to her little room and took off her wet clothes, and a clean nightie was warming by the fire, and a mug of hot acorn coffee had been placed by her bed. Look at her little acorn coffee, and look at her nice, sweet, cozy room with a fire going. It looks so cozy and safe and happy. I'll never go out in the field on my own again, Primrose whispered sleepily. Her mother gave her a kiss and smoothed her pillow. Ease your whiskers, rest your paws, pies and puddings fill the stores. Sweetly dream the night away till sunshine brings another day. She sang softly, tucking Primrose into her comfy bed. Night night, Primrose. Tomorrow we can read the winter story. Thank you for joining me. And I hope you come back and watch and listen to more stories.